Welcome. In this video, I would like to address friendship networks and how the friends that you select while at college can help or possibly hinder your academic performance. Let's get started. Typically, friends are selected from convenience. We associate with people who are similar to us, and we tend to meet these people through activities that we enjoy, whether that's joining an athletic team or participating in a particular game or even, to some extent, choosing the college that we attend. These friends that we meet through convenience because they are similar to us are likely to give us strong social support. In other words, they help us remain emotionally healthy. They make us happy. They listen to us when we're sad. They offer us advice. They give us counsel. And they make us feel good. But friends can also come through social influence, such as the friends that we make because we were required to participate in an academic learning team or a committee membership. We need to be cautious, though, because friends in both camps can positively influence our academic performance and particularly in those that uh, we are influenced to become friends with, can have a negative influence on our academic performance. Now, these friendship networks that we form can both benefit and hinder academic performance. It depends on why we formed the friendships, and for what purpose we maintain the friendships. Dense networks of friends, in which the friends are friends with one another in um, almost a myriad um, relationship, is that's not the right word to describe it. A very complex relationship where I am friends with Tom, who is friends with Bob, who is friends with Mark, and Tom is friends with Mark, and I'm friends with Mark, and Mark is... We're all friends with one another. That's a dense network. These dense networks can be called tight-knitter and compartmentalized. And I'll show you diagrams of these networks in just a moment to help you visualize what they can look like. But networks in which one person, for example, if I were friends with 15 other people who themselves are not friends with one another, is a type of network called a sampling network that is most likely to offer me academic benefit. But it's also least likely to offer me emotional benefit. So a tight knitter network of friends is a single dense network. Um, what's a good... Um, metaphor for this. Um, it it kind of looks like a ball of yarn. It's just, it's all the pieces of fiber are touching one another. All the friends are friends with one another. This type of network offers excellent social support, good emotional benefit. It, but it may present distraction to any individual member's academic performance 
because the group is so socially bonded, it, ten, it may encourage social activities rather than purely academic activities. This type of a network is very common in, at American universities among minority students. They seek to meet people who are similar to them and form multi-connected bonds with one another for the social support that's necessary as a minority student. A compartmentalized network might look like a barbell, where there are two somewhat dense networks connected to one another through a single person. And it's that single person who gains benefit from both networks. Now, it doesn't have to be just two dense sections of networks. It could be three or four. Um, but the common linking point is a single person. These networks are common among majority students, white students on campus. And they can serve that linking person well because one part of the network, one end of the barbell, is for social benefit. The other portion of the network, the other end of the barbell, is for academic benefit. So that link, that person that links the two sections or three or four sections of the network can get specific benefits from each of the portions of the network. And a sampler network is one in which uh, a person is individually acquainted with, individual friends who are themselves not friends with one another. Here's an example of the first type of network that I described, the tight knitter relationships. Start with the person Valerie here. And notice that Valerie is friends with everyone else in this network even Stephen, who's down in the lower right corner. And most or all of the members of this network are friends with one another. So this is where I, why I describe it kind of like a ball of yarn. It's just these lines are connecting almost every member to every other member. This type of network is excellent for social support. It can be useful for academic support, but its better purpose is for emotional support. Here's an example of the network that I use the metaphor of barbell. Betsy in the center is the linking person, and she is a member of two relatively dense groups where the members of each group are not friends with one another. Within each group, there are multiple friendship relationships, but between the two groups, there's no link other than through Betsy. So, Betsy could use the left-hand link for academic support. These are people with whom she can study, she can go to for help. And the friends on the right side of the diagram could be her emotional support friends, the friends that she likes to go to movies with, that she will uh, split a pizza with. Here's an example of the third type of friendship network, a sampler network, in which Steve is friends with many people who themselves 
are just loosely related to one another, principally through Steve. Now, there are some examples in this diagram of a few members being friends with each other without having to pass through Steve. But for the most part, this network is almost in orbit around Steve. This is an, a type of network typically demonstrated by majority students, white students on campus. And it's also typical of students who are academically independent. They can go to one specific person when they need help, but they don't need a network of people when they have a question. I gathered the data for this portion of the presentation from two papers, principally from the second paper, from McCabe's paper. And it was her diagrams that I used in this presentation. Now, I'm going to ask you to share your advice about your friendship network. How many friends do you have? If, you, if, if I were to ask you to sit down right now and make a list of all your friends, how many could you list? How many of those friends are at college with you? How many of them are at home or at another college? If you had to choose among the three friendship networks, which one would you choose? And how do you use your network of friends to support your academic performance? Please leave your comments below this video and share your thoughts with other students. And then come back and view the comments and see what other students have to say. Being at college requires making friends. I am someone who went through college, and in most of my work, I've uh, created sampler networks. I am strongly introverted. I don't uh, make friends easily. I make acquaintances very easily. I, am, uh, I have the ability to um, make chit-chat um, when I have to, but to make a deep friendship in which I have an emotional bond is difficult for me. I value the friends I have, but I much prefer to have a few friends who may know each other, but aren't necessarily friends with each other. But that's my personality. That's my preference. I, it works well for me, but I don't expect that you are the same as me. We're all individual, and each type of network has its pros and its cons. Until we meet again in a future video, I wish you the absolute best in all of your academic work. And while you're at college, I hope you make as many good, supportive friends as you desire. Bye for now.